Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Rilling, and today I'm going to be telling you about the color mauve. If you were an ordinary person before the 1850s, your wardrobe would have been made up of browns and grays. Natural dyes were the only way to color fabric and they were very expensive and difficult to produce. Natural dyes were sourced from plants, minerals, or animals, such as scarlet from cochineal bugs and yellow from the weld plant. Purple dye, for instance, was produced by gathering mucus from tiny snails pictured here, and later from bat guano or lichen. Since purple was particularly difficult to produce, it was expensive and associated with royalty, like in this image of Emperor Justinian in his purple cloak. But in 1856, the world would change. William Henry Perkin revolutionized color. At the age of 15, Perkin enrolled in the Royal College of Chemistry. Three years later, at home on spring break, Perkin was completing homework. His professor had tasked him with finding a way to create quinine, which was a treatment for malaria. Quinine was only available naturally in the bark of some South American trees, so it was expensive and difficult for the British to obtain. Perkin was using coal tar, which is the discarded sludge that could be found from Victorian gas lamps. And by reacting a part of this tar, aniline, he created a thick black goo. That wasn't supposed to happen. Quinine is colorless. When he tried to clean it out of his glass, it left behind a brilliant, rich purple color. It was not quinine, but it was pretty cool. Along with being a scientist, Perkin was also a painter. So he saw potential for this bright purple color and he dyed a piece of silk with it, creating a beautiful hue that reminded him of the mallow flower, which in French is called the mauve flower. So he named his new discovery mauvine after the French word for this flower. And this is the color mauve. Um, the dye was bright, it wouldn't wash out or fade, and it was pretty easy to make. It happened to be the perfect moment to create a purple dye. Purple was in the height of fashion. The Empress Eugenie, the wife of Napoleon III in France, had worn a lilac dress in the summer of 1857, and all of the fashionable ladies wanted to emulate her. By 1862, Queen Victoria of England was wearing garments dyed with mauvine. Perkin had set off mauve mania. Mauve got so trendy that sarcastic writers suggested that everything be dyed mauve, including houses and buses. That didn't happen. But mauve dye was actually used to do things like print stamps, pictured here. Perkin helped create mania for other colors too. Other chemists imitated his process to produce colors that also took the world by a storm. Fuchsia, magenta, brilliant red, and indigo blue were all created by a similar aniline dye process. Through an accident of chemistry combined with good instincts and artistic sense, William H. Perkin and those he inspired helped bring color to ordinary people. Hello, Thomas McLaren School. I want to go over a few expectations for testing next week. So the schedule for next week is Monday we will have a normal in-person day. And then Tuesday and Wednesday we're going to have a mix of distance and in-person uh, depending on the day. I'm going to go over that in the next couple slides. Thursday will be a normal in-person day. And then Friday we just have a distance day as we have had all year. So... For Tuesday, April 13th, the students who will be doing a distance learning day are the 6th and the 10th grade. 12th grade, your schedule is a little bit different. If you, if you are in Ms. Rorstrom's drama class or Mr. Hanson's second hour orchestra class, you are coming in person from 7.45 to 11.30 a.m. The other seniors, you're just doing a distance learning day, so check your Google Classrooms. 
All right, grades who are actually testing that day, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 11th grade, and then 7th and 8th grade, just know you have drop-off and pick-up times as normal. You can start arriving as early as 7.15. I'll explain where you should go when you get here, and then pick-up times are normal for that day. Ninth grade, you will take the PSAT from 7.45 to 11.30 a.m., um, if you will need to stay after to wait for a sibling to take you home, please have your parents email me and we can arrange work for you to do. You'll probably just be studying quietly in the commons until you leave. Wednesday, April 14th, grades doing a distance learning that day are 7th grade, 9th grade, and 11th grade. 12th grade, we're basically doing the opposite of the day before. You are coming in person from 7.45 to 11.30 a.m. if you are in Mr. Kelly's drama class or Mr. Hansen's fifth hour orchestra class. And then the other seniors, you're doing a distance learning day, so just check your Google Classroom pages. Grades who are testing on Wednesday, 6th, 8th, and 10th grade. 6th and 8th grade, again, drop off at pickup times as normal. 10th grade, you will take the PSAT from 7.45 to 11.30 a.m. And same thing, if you need to wait to be picked up after 11.30 a.m., your parents can't come and get you just have them let me know and we'll arrange for you to do quiet work in the commons so here are the expectations for testing it is very important that you are here on time unless you are sick you should stay home if you're sick otherwise please get here well in advance going into the testing room just know we will provide pencils you can read when you are done with the test but don't bring school books in so don't bring textbooks or anything you're doing in lit comp or hl just bring something you want to read on your own. Make sure to bring water bottles and snacks for breaks. You can store them in the back of the room you're testing in. And no watches that make noise or smart watches. You should check those in with your cell phones when you arrive. Ninth, 11th grade, please bring your TI calculator and make sure batteries are charged. Just know we will have no extra calculators, so please remember to bring them. And Again, check in phones when you arrive per normal and be in uniform and have your mask. Filling in bubbles, if you could just look at this, on the left hand side is the wrong method. No check marks, no X's, no partial filling in. Please fill in a nice dark color with your pencils as seen on the right hand side. So it should look as it is under the correct method. For tests, you'll see when they say to go and when to stop, the symbol will just look like this. Go on and an arrow. That means turn the page. When you see the stop sign, that is literally what it means. Stop. Do not turn the page. This is very important. Otherwise, your test could be invalidated. All right, entering and exiting the classes. So all middle school students will enter through the main doors of school building. This is a change. So if you are in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, just enter through the main doors through the plaza. Do not enter where you normally do. We will have a place for you to check in cell phones and watches and arrive in the morning as usual. Go to your homeroom and there will be a staff member to direct you into the classroom. If you actually need a test in a separate room, they'll tell you where to go. Um, as you're waiting, let's say you arrive at 715, you can just read quietly. You can draw. Um, it would also be good for you to go to the restroom before testing starts, fill up your water bottle. Uh, before the test begins, the proctor will take your book that you've been reading, if you have one, and put your name on it, and then they'll put the books at the back of the room. And then when you're done testing, they can bring it back to you. Go to your seat only when your proctor tells you to. There's a set seating chart, so when you enter the homeroom or whichever room you're testing in, they will tell you exactly where to sit, and please stay there. Teachers will again check pockets for cell phones or watches that beep in case you forget. Uh, make sure your water bottles and snacks are in the back of the room and teacher will hand out test booklets with your name already on it. Once you're seated, please be quiet. Listen carefully to what the proctor says. No socializing, just sit, listen, and do not touch anything. The teacher will read instructions. If you need something explained again, he or she may read the instructions one more time, and that's it. After that, before doing the test, the teacher can only tell you how much time is left. Sorry, that's just the rule. So for instance, if, they just, if you said, wait, I don't understand this, they will just read the instructions one more time. That's just the limitation they have. Again, entering and exiting the class. At the end of the test, there will be a stop sign. You must stop. Turning the page can invalidate the next test. So again, when you see that stop symbol as shown here, please stop. You may be curious, but for better or worse, the scores from these tests follow you. So just stop at the stop sign. Once you are done, if there's time, check your answers. 
If you really are done, close your book and raise your hand. Do not get up. Your teacher will take your test and give you your book if you brought one. When do you use the calculator? The test will clearly state when you can do so. No talking or anything until the teacher says time is up. Even when your whole class is done, you must be silent until a school administrator says you are done, since testing will still be going on in other rooms. If you need to use the restroom or suddenly are sick, tell the teacher who will wait until someone comes to the classroom. The teacher can't actually leave the classroom, so please hang tight until a monitor comes by. So clarifications about homework next week. For the days you are doing distance learning, you will be assigned homework. Just check your Google Classroom pages and you'll see what you need to do. For the days you are testing, you will, be not, you will not be assigned homework. So even if you test for just half a day, you will not have work that day. The whole point is for you to just focus on that test. Final reminders, test taking, you all will do great. Please do take the test seriously. If it asks for an answer, do not leave it blank. The test itself is not stressful. There are just a lot of rules so that everyone across the whole state is taking the same test in the same testing environment. All you need to remember is as soon as you're in the room, be quiet and listen to the directions from the teacher. You'll be just fine. We'll take these tests, pack them in a box, and send them out, and then we're back to normal. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day.